Okay, so first thing I want to do is graph the relation. So you have to decide which is x and which is y. What is the independent variable? Tickets. So these are my x's, these are my y's. So what are the five points that I have? 10, negative 30. 20, negative 10. 30, 10. 40, 30. And 50, 50. Right? So I got to put this on a graph. I'm going to make each square worth what on the graph I have? 10. So if that's 10, then that must be negative 10. And then we set it up. When I'm at 10, I'm at negative 30. When I'm at 20, I'm at negative 10. When I'm at 30, I'm at positive 10. When I'm at 40, I'm at 30. When I'm at 50, I'm at 50. Graphed, almost. Does it have the scales? Does it have axes? Does it have points? Now, to finish this graph, what must I do? It's linear. So, am I going to connect the line? On this graph, the way I've drawn, am I going to connect the line? Okay, guys, 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 guys. Listen to the way I asked the question. On my graph, the way I have drawn it, would I connect the line, Sarah? Yes. Why? Because you can't still have a ticket, which is right, but you can't also draw a little... I cannot go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because what will it look like on my graph? A straight line. Now, if I had a giant graph and I could go point by point, would I connect the line? No. No. Why, Lauren? Because you can't buy half a ticket. You can't buy half a ticket. Does everybody understand? Right? So, on this graph, with this scale, I must connect the line. Cool? cool is it not linear or non -linear? It is linear. Why? And it has nothing to do with the line. What makes it linear? It goes up 10, it goes down 20 each time. Like if it's 10 up 10, down 20? You make 20, you have $20 coming in, yes. right? So that's what makes it linear. 10 that way, 20 up, always. Is it discrete or continuous? Now, this is where we have the argument. It is discrete data, but depending on how you graph it, you may end up connecting the line. Does everybody understand? That is why I made such a big deal about what the data actually is as opposed to what the data <laughs> is shown as. <laughs> Sounds like he'd been in the class a few times. You guys are still talking about that? Is everybody cool? Yeah. All right. So it is discrete. And then the question is automatically, well, then why do you connect the data? Connect the line because of what we just said. It depends on scales. Understand? If I gave you this, if I gave you this, could we have done dots? Yeah, good boy, we could have done that. We could have, right? Because we could have gone 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, and up 20, right? Okay, good. Oh, you guys, it's almost like you pay attention. I do like it that when I say, ask a, a question that has not controversial answers, but ambiguous answers like that, that you guys get that violent about it. 
I think if I were to leave the room, it would look like the Circus Maximus in here. And Lauren would have a chair up. And she'd be like, Argh! and Byron would have both of his crutches up. And he'd be like nunchucking them. And be swinging his casted leg around and knocking out people's knees. Man, guys, it's only math. Stay cool. Um, now, tricky, tricky. What is the domain and range of this relation? Uh, Lauren. Is that the domain of the range? Okay. <laughs> All right. Which is the domain? Uh, which is the domain? Oh, great. So, okay, so what are, what are the possible values? What's the fewest amount of tickets I can sell? Zero. Zero. What's the most tickets that I can sell? I can sell an infinite amount of tickets? What would you guys say here? You have some data. Right, because that's the highest number you have data for. You have no idea if you sold more than 50 or not. You can't go to infinity, right? Excellent. Okay, now X is a set of what? All real numbers. All real numbers? I can sell point one of a ticket? No, no. Whole numbers. A W for whole. And what is the range? I reverse these. Normally I do range in red. What's the range? Blake? Okay. Lauren? We just did the domain. We just the same. It's negative 50. What? It's negative 50? Wait, negative 30? Negative 30? But it could be smaller, but it is smaller. I know that. So is negative 30 right? No. 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 What is the lowest profit? Negative 50, thank you. Up to? 50. This one's trickier. All reals? Because you can't be less than negative 50 unless you've got gold tickets. No, like, in a while. Integers. No. Negative 50 is less than equal. As I go up one, how much does the money go up? No, that's when I go up ten. One and two. Lauren has her boundaries right, but has she written it right? What did she say? That the lowest number is highest number? You did this absolutely correctly. It is that negative 50 and 50. It should be round bracket. No. No, because it never This says it's an interval. It says it's every value on the y-axis from negative 50 to 50. But I don't know what it would be because I don't actually understand how to use it. Oh, negative 50 is less than or equal to x. What does it even mean? I can't do interval notation here, can I? Because it's going up by what? 
So technically, it's negative 50, negative 48, negative 46, and you'd have to write out all 50 of them. Uh-oh. Technically. That would be 100 numbers. But what, what yes, but you guys can show it to me with that, and then just a little note, and I'd be happy. Okay? okay? Everybody understand? All right. And E... How many tickets must be sold to break even? Where's the break even point? 25. Where on here was the break even point? 25. Right there. Right? Because that means I've sold enough tickets to make, now I'm into positive money, which is 25. Nope, not twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five tickets. So, do we get one more so, no, not by this point. You're gonna get one for your graph. You're gonna get one for your linear. But it has to have a reason. You only give me half. Give yourself half. You didn't give a reason. One for discrete. Same thing. Domain and range. I'm being charitable because it's a review, right? You can have, uh, you can have one for each. Sam has to leave. I know Sam has to leave. It's 1.30. Bye, Sam. Bye-bye, Sam. And E was one, making the whole question out of six. Everybody good? Yep. And finally. Clark earns $40. Every fence he paints costs paint one fence, $16. Spent total $6 on paintbrushes before he started painting. And he's using a recycled paint tray. His profit is equal to earnings minus all of his expenses. Just like in real life, you want to be a businessman. Everybody says, I'm not going to have a boss, but my own boss better be able to do math. So write a function to represent Clark's profit for any number of fences painted. What's X? What's Y? Lauren, what's X? What's Y? X is fences painted and T is profit. Great. If I paint zero fences, how much profit do I make? Negative six. Look again. No. I paint zero fences. Did I buy any paint? No. So how much do I lose? You bought six yeah, you brushes. Yes. Yeah. But she said negative 16 and negative 6. Oh, yeah. No, oh. oh. But, if you like, but if you like, hey, somebody calls and hey, I want you to paint my fence, you buy the paint, and then like, oh, just kidding, and then you have the paint. Yeah. yeah. That's, just, that's just not that nice. But the point, the question is, Zero offenses. Okay. So I lose how much money, Lauren? I'm at minus six, yes? yes. If I paint one fence, $18. I get 40 minus how much? 16 for one fence minus six. How many times do I pay that six? Once. So do I get 40? Of that 40, do I not lose some of that money? Yeah. But I don't lose it more than once, do I? No. Because I'm, I'm using my paint tray again and I'm washing my paint brushes, right? So how much should this be? What should I do with the 40 and the 6? If you want to, yeah. Well, like, you make 40 and 16, 24, so you make 24 times the number of fences, subtract 6. Profit. There you go. Yeah. So, is this and this related, or is this and this related? The second one. The second one, because I lose 16 bucks per fence for paint, yes? So re- but I only lose the what? 6 once, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So that one fence is really 24, right, minus 6. Now that second fence is going to be what? I get 24 per fence 
times how much? Two, but I lost my original six dollars. What's my third fence? 24 times three minus six. What is my F fence? 24 F minus six. Everybody cool? Now, how many ways are there to figure that out? Yeah, there's more than one, right? That's just the way I happen to do it. Do I care how you do it? Can I get in your head? No. I cannot get inside your head and tell you how to figure this out. I can only show you the simplest way I personally can think of to do it. And that's this. Who's responsible to find out more efficient ways? You guys. Everybody cool? So there's one. So uh, profit equals 24F minus 6. Yeah? So you make your table of values, which I have most of it here. So that gets you one for that. Your table of values is zero, which is you minus $6. One, you're at $18, right? Two, you're at, which is it? 42, right. Three, now you've got the pattern, right? I'm going up by 24 each time, yeah? So this one's going to be 66, this one's going to be 90, and this one's going to be 114. Yeah? Yep. That gets you one mark. Uh, how much profit if he paints 15? So that's 24 times 15 minus 6, 354 for one point. And how many fences to make, to make 474? 20. You've got to reverse. It's function notation, isn't it? Because profit profit of fences, P of F, is 20. That's a nice two. Got a little twitchy there. 24F minus 6. So in this first one, it's P of 15. And in the second one, it's 474 equals 24F minus 6. And then you do your algebra. Everybody good? Byron. Yeah, can we go back? This is one question on the, the matching. Uh, like, I think it was like two, three, three pages back. <coughs> Number one. Could you just again? One, one with a C. Uh-huh. I kind of don't understand that. Okay, it's a printing error, remember? Okay. The, the, the greater than and less than is in the wrong, it's, I, I typed the wrong one. Oh, oh, yeah. But most of you guys said it was B because you said the range could be all real numbers. But it can't be. Okay. Because of that squared, you could never have a range value lower than negative four. Because okay. no matter what you do to X's, it's going to be positive once you square it, yeah. right? So this should have said y, uh, oh no, I did, yeah, no, y is greater than negative 4, that needed to say, it was missing the negative. If it had the negative, it was right. And then this whole thing is out of a lot, I don't know, 10 on 208, um, uh, 1, 2, 3, Oh, there, I've got a 3. So that's 16. 206 appears to be 7. That's 23. 205 appears to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's 30. 33, 34, 35, 36. And four is, I got 40. Do you guys get 40? You guys get 40? Okay. Give yourself a mark of 40 and, and you'll report that to me on tomorrow's test. Oakley doakley. Well, I usually say okie dokie artichokey, but I said oakley doakley like Ned Flanders. But she still said artichokey instead of saying artichokely.
Everybody good? Any questions about functions? Okay, if you look in your book, if you look in your book, you should see that I have given you this checklist on page 200. Take a moment, because I have put this in, because this is the type of thing that you are going to be expected to do more and more of as you proceed down the IB path. Self-assessment. Look at those eight statements, I think they are. 200. And give yourself, a on a scale of one to three, one being, oh my God. Two being, three being, go away, shut up, I know. I Go. It is eight statements. Page 200. We will spend the rest of the period either addressing these well, we will address these, and then we will go on because the very first lesson of the very next unit is very helpful for this current test that you're about to run. <laughs> what is the next week? The next is graphing linear <laughs> equations, <laughs> not real life stuff, not speeds of skiers and things like that. Yeah. Pure math. So are we, yeah. it's the when is it, are we taking a test tomorrow or the day after? Tomorrow, okay. in a perfect world. Yeah. But. We'll see. Uh. Now, this list was supposed to be private, right? So I'm going to very quickly, very quickly discuss all eight of them. If you had a one, you will want to pay very close attention when I get to the one you had one or two for, okay? And I'm going to be asking some of you to explain these if you feel ready to do so because I have already explained all of them a lot. So if anybody has a one or a two, it's because I have done a bad job of explaining it to you. Perhaps one of your peers can do it better. So first one, can anybody in the room, is anybody in the room willing to describe how they identify independent and dependent variables? So if you have a three, and you're willing to talk, I'd love to hear from you. If you're not, I'm just gonna talk again and repeat what I already said. Anybody want? Mm -hmm. Go. Keep talking. Which one's dependent and independent is whichever.